A FAM production. Furniture and mattress. FAM.news. You have delivery people that are great marketers, but you got to empower them. You have to train them and you have to make sure they're consistent with your marketing message. How does it work? We've got Keith Moneymaker back on the show. The FAM marketing show begins right now. Brick and mortar to click and order. Nationwide Marketing Group is your partner for the entire shopping journey. When it comes to digital marketing, Nationwide members don't just buy clicks or impressions, they get results. You see, Nationwide Marketing Group is a premier Google partner with an industry leading digital marketing platform called AdRocket. Nationwide gets your store in front of customers during the shopping journey, driving customers into your store to buy from you. Learn more right now at nationwidegroup.org. Keith Moneymaker, welcome back to the show, my friend. How are you welcome and your back. giant beard doing? I am just shaking my marketing moneymaker everywhere. <laughs> you know you're the oh, well inspiration for that. You really were. Oh, well, you like, know. Oh, this is going to be so great. <laughs> yeah, so I was waiting for, those, for it. Mm. For those who don't know, the name <laughs> of our newsletter is Shake Your Marketing Moneymaker. And this is Keith Moneymaker. And we're like, that's going to be a great name for the newsletter because we want people to get out there and shake it, work it, move it feel it, do all the things that we know Keith Moneymaker does in his marketplace. And that's why he is an expert is here on the show today, because we want him to share a little bit of marketing magic with you about delivery drivers and how they can be great marketers and how your, even your truck can be a great marketing vehicle. Uh, we'll get to that one later on. But first, we always have a trivia question right at the top. And Adrian has it for us. Oh, it's the best. Okay, so let's talk about YouTube. Okay, how many YouTube channels have more than a million subscribers. I'm going to give you three three options. 3,500, 5,700, or 8,000. Have more How than a million YouTube subscribers. More than a million. Hmm. Don't be doing any Googling. I can see you, man. You're slick. No, he's thinking. Oh, cheater. Oh, no, no. He That's had a phone. Stick. Cheater. Somebody's I, calling. Oh. No, somebody's All calling. People store. want to buy mattresses from me, I guess. I don't know. Okay, I mean, so I'm going to say 8,000 because I know YouTube is huge. It's been around since 2005. I even know the origin story. I'm going to say 8,000 people have more than a million subscribers on YouTube. Okay. 3,700. He's saying 3,700. Well, 37 not – 37 wasn't an option. 3,500 was the option. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Or 5,700 5, was the second option. <laughs> oh, 5,700. Okay, so 3,500. 35. Okay. So we have 3,500 to 8,000. All right. I'll let you guys know at the end of the show. Why don't oh, we get into exceptional delivery drivers? Exceptional delivery drivers. And by the way, you can text us on our podium number, which is up on fam.news. If you have a guess of your own, or if you want to ask Keith Moneymaker a question that we didn't get to, Keith, tell us about how Good delivery call. drivers can be great marketers if you let them. Well, first starts off with giving people autonomy. You know, not micromanaging everybody that works for you. You have to learn how to it's good lead management advice. To teach. Yep. You have to learn how to lead and then teach other people how to lead because it, you can't control everything. And if you even if you if you don't want to grow your business, if you just want to sustain your business, you're going to end up with turnover. Um, if you don't teach other people how to do what you do. Genuinely speaking, I have four managers that work for me, one for our charity delivery manager at the store slash sales manager. And um, Eve, my marketing manager. So sorry, I've got so four people that lead everybody else, but I still am involved in some of the day to day and things like that. Corey, my delivery manager, couldn't be here today. We actually just unloaded a truck at the warehouse, and he's keeping those guys on top of their game. He um he's been with me actually my longest standing staff member. So he's been over with us six years, and he's been through the thick of it. But the best lessons I think he's learned are the ones he's done himself and he's been able to turn those into experiences and how he trains our delivery team where we used to be stressed and didn't know who was going to do a delivery next day, or it was going to be me at the end of the night or call my dad where now we have Corey and we have six full-time delivery guys where we can run six days a week deliveries. And on top of that, have somebody always available for trucks. And on top of that, run a same day or next day delivery on a second truck if we need to. Now I understand that takes resources, but Corey's trained all these guys based on him able to grow. So Corey has grown in the past six years just from just your regular delivery guy to now my delivery manager. Like, I don't worry about anything delivery warehouse. Like, I don't have to worry about it. It's great. It's beautiful. Beautiful thing. 
He's been on every, every type of delivery. He knows how, all the experiences. We do a quarterly meeting, getting feedback from the delivery guys, making sure the sales team and the delivery team are kind of running the sequence. Um, because believe it or not, as important as having salespeople on the floor is, the delivery team are the last people that are going to see your end consumer. And if they don't, they don't have your company's, if, if they don't have your, uh, sorry, um, if they don't know anything about your company, if they don't like, they're best in your company, they're not going to genuinely care about what they're doing. They're just going to, you know, set a metrics and frame and leave instead of, hey, Mrs. Smith, would you, do you need us to vacuum under your bed if it's an elderly lady? Or let me actually take initiative and tighten up that headboard of that frame so it doesn't wobble when we leave. Hell, do you need help putting your bed skirt on? Do you need help putting your mattress protector on? That other mattress, do we need to move in the other room? So things like that, we delivered expectations to our delivery team. Um, so, but we, we, we don't, um, I'm sorry, I'm going all over the place here. <laughs> no, you're, you're actually nailing it because I think, I think one, well. of the things you, one of the things you're talking about here, I know like we, we talk about this as a marketing show and it is, but your culture that you create, the That's training you invest in people really reflects the brand. Okay. So every touch point, your people are going to pay off your brand and your brand is what people can know and trust and then want to do business with. Your brand is what people are going to recommend to their friends and neighbors and loved ones. But if somebody comes into your house and they don't vacuum under the bed or they leave a mess behind, like the HVAC guys did in my house the other day, you know, I'm sweeping the stairs trying to get it all cleaned up. They were nice enough guys, but I'm like paying attention to some of those details is going to make you a raving fan and the marketing is going to happen for you. And especially if the expectation is this is a delivery guy, you know, they're going to be covered in, you know, dust and grill, you know, filth and grime and everything. But if they come in and they exceed expectations and they surprise and delight that person, now all of a sudden marketing is happening for your business that you didn't even know was possible. You, did, you, you may not even ever know that it's going to promote your business through that person's sphere of influence, but it's happening. Well, we and on, I think it was this just... past week's. No, go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. Go ahead. No, no. I, all I was going to say is that if you look back to, I think it's this week's fan marketing show when it talks about, is this what you were going to say? <laughs> Keith, no. Mm -hmm. um, if you look back mm -hmm. to this week, I think we talked about people are out there to steal your people. And so if you're not investing in them, then other people are going to take them and they will, and they will be a better representation for that company. So it, that if you get good people, you can train them up, but do so well. You sure can. And I am constantly on the hunt. I'm constantly on the hunt for other people that are working for other companies. I don't, I don't really do it for the local businesses and stuff because I pride myself on the local business support, but I'm constantly on the hunt. If I see, if I see a great person, but just a, a shabby work environment and stuff, I am, I am on the prowl all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we just think of in our industry, just, just delivery guys, you know, we just think of delivery guys, mm -hmm. delivery guys, delivery guys. So you know, we, we deliver the expectation up front. It's like we have a, we deliver a two hour window. We'll get our call when we're on the way if we're running early or if we're running late. If you call three times and no answer, we don't show up. So all these things we go over in, in training and, and treat them not just as a, as a delivery guy, as a speaking voice to the team. And like we talked about in the last episode, having a story to tell too. Like, yes, you can set your company apart and have no story to tell, such as like dreams for all, but all those touch points of just cleaning up after yourself, calling when you're on the way, helping them make the bed. And then a little in game, and then a little story to tell them where their used beds going. Like it's a, even if it's not anything dreams for us, it's just something you're doing for the food bank. Like hey, if it is the food bank, you give all your, your delivery team like a coupon to give to every consumer at the end of the day, or a little gift, or something like that. Like they are your last touch point and your last point for word of mouth. And and so many companies, oh, we'll just get more delivery guys. Oh, we'll just get more delivery guys. No, like. I have I have solid employees anywhere from one year to over six years with us, and I have sixteen employees, and most of which are full time. So I'm a fine example of like if you invest in your people, they'll stick around, and and not just for the money. A lot of times, I'll even bring up in the meetings, you think they need a raise, and like Keith, it's not just about the money. Like so, like my deliver my managers, they have a more close to relationship with other team members, so they really know what makes them tick, and they know. When I say makes them tick, I mean, know what motivates them. And, it, and it's not just money. It's time off. It's what what does this person do as a hobby? How can you support their something their family members doing? Things like that, like quality over quantity every day. And I tell you, Absolutely. a kind I would, word goes I, a long way like... too because people are going home at night and they're sitting down at the dinner table. And if they're able to tell their husband or wife something nice that their boss said to them or that the owner mm -hmm. of the store said to them, that is going to create 
such a special moment they get to share with their families. And so I think, you know, it's all about culture and it's all about training and all these things you're talking about. Let's, let's get into nitty gritty just a little bit though, because as a marketing show, what are some of the things that your delivery drive drivers do that actually market your business? Just like you talked about, if you didn't listen to the ep last episode with Keith, he talks about dreams for all foundation, which takes old mattresses or used mattresses, sanitizes them and gives them to people in need. People that otherwise can't afford a mattress might be sleeping on the floor. So just like you said, from a marketing standpoint and from a, a love standpoint, I love this brand. Your delivery drivers are doing a fair bit of marketing there by saying, here's, here's what end of life is going to look like. We're going to basically resuscitate your mattress and it's going to, it's going to be reincarnated here and, and actually continue to serve somebody. But beyond that, like what's nitty gritty for you in terms of marketing with delivery drivers? Um, well, the presentation of the truck, you know, we, we often see a lot of in our industry using rented trucks. Um, so it's up to the, the company of the retail store. It's like, how do you mainly operate? And if you are doing a lot of deliveries, you, and you're not investing in a wrap or a sign on your truck. It represents your brand. You're, you're, you're not hitting home. That is a drive. That is a billboard. That is a mobile billboard. You can drive anywhere. And guess what? Along with digital and targeted marketing, and then somebody's truck pulls up in that driveway like that, you just hit a home run. They're going to come see you when they need a bed. So not just one, not just the guys, but it's a delivery truck. And also teaching your delivery team rules and respects on the road. Like they may already have that, but just reminding them of things on a subtle basis to make sure they're being respectful drivers. Um, Matching company gear, gear that looks, that matches and all goes together. Not just show up in t-shirt and blue jeans, get, provide them, invest in them, give them some good shirts, give them a good hat, a beanie, a sweatshirt when they're cold, check in them often, provide water on the trucks, provide drinks for your team, things they don't have to spend their extra money on and you're providing. So then they don't have to worry about that stuff. And they're more invested in getting the job done at the end of the day. Corey, Corey takes all the guys to, to lunch once a week. Like they have this, their own like little crony session, like of just like hanging out and go to lunch and, and he invests and spends time and genuinely cares about them. So if you don't have a delivery manager in between you and your delivery team, you, you need to be taking time separate, separately with your sales team and your delivery team to do things for them and not just be on your phone all lunch period either. Like book an hour out for you to do lunch with your delivery team and show them that you care. It is the final touch point. The final touch point. From And really, it closes the loop for the salesperson. So your salesperson might do the best job on the planet. And then if delivery gets fumbled, everything gets screwed up from there. Great tips, Keith Moneymaker. As always, so much of it revolves around training and culture, investing in your people, and then making sure you're checking in with them and making sure that you know the standards and your expectations are being met. And that's what's going to help your delivery team turn into great marketers. And then, of course, you know some people put products on the truck. You know, whether it's a bed frame or pillows or sheets. So if you can figure out that piece of the puzzle as well, you can actually transact right there from the road as well. And I know that's a, a whole other conversation, but in terms of marketing and driving sales, you know, making sure that yeah. customers' needs are fulfilled, I think is also important if you're able to do that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna ask me something? No, I was just gonna I basically Mark basically took it out of my mouth to say, you know, sometimes your delivery drivers are undervalued because they are the very last touch point and you could have given the customer an exceptional in store experience and then it's ruined if your delivery driver ends it and they're like, Oh, well, they just left mud all over my house or screwed something else up. So And I tell you, in this day and age, if you can set yourself apart by thinking about transitions, that's going to go a long way. And we've literally, mm -hmm. I've given an entire speech about this to Nationwide Primetime, and it was all about winning in the transitions. And the idea here is the time, you know, what are the transitions that happen whenever you either go in to buy a mattress or after you've purchased the mattress? A big transition is the time between I bought it until they're here at my house. And that transition, it can be long, you know, sometimes it can take a few days because you have to coordinate schedules and things like that. Well, um, if you can figure out ways to create delight in those gaps, those, those time periods that are typically kind of clunky, then you can really surprise and delight people. For example, there was a baseball team called the Savannah Bananas. Well, from the time some, somebody buys a, uh, uh, a ticket to the, to the baseball game, you know, from leaving their house to go to the baseball game, it's a transition. So what do they do? They send people a Spotify playlist to get them pumped up. And it's all about baseball and fun stuff like that. In the parking lot, they have parking penguins that help them find a place to, to park. So all these 
very low delight moments they've turned into surprise and people are happy. So think about your delivery team and think about those transitions. And I think you're going to win. And what I want to think about is the right answer to this trivia question. Adrian, remind us what it was and we'll see who okay, is how many... the winner. Oh, okay. I can tell you, I believe one of you is correct. Let's go around. So last, last episode, y'all were in the middle. Okay. How many YouTube accounts have more than a million subscribers? So it was 3,500, 5,700 or 8,000. Mr. Kinsley, I believe you had 8,000. Mr. Moneymaker, I think you said 3,500. The actual answer is 8,000. 8,000 oh. channels have more than a million subscribers. Keith, tell me what I won. You won a podcast. With no, don't, don't give him that. <laughs> don't give him that. I have to deal with uh, him after this is over. Like, don't, don't elevate yeah. the ego. <laughs> Keith, thanks. A, thanks Tom. so much for being on our show. Uh, please tell your beard if you can hear us. Thank you as well. You've got your earbuds in. We appreciate you, man. Uh, thanks for sharing those great tips on how delivery drivers and your delivery team can be great marketers and really help your customers have a wonderful experience and pass along our best to your team, Corey, and all the, all the crew. Absolutely. Invest in your people, people.